Welcome back to Sunrise. Now, over 85 million Nigerians live be below the national poverty line. Now, these numbers point to the fundamental fact that Nigeria's economic growth needs to be inclusive to provide employment opportunities and leave millions out of poverty. It's been established that while sustaining high economic growth is a necessary condition for poverty reduction, it's not a sufficient condition for an equitable distribution of wealth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the last one and a half decade, Nigeria has witnessed economic growth. One of the major problems is that economic growth in Nigeria has not created meaningful employment as many of the countries use, including those with university degrees, are currently unemployed. So what kind of growth have we been experiencing mm -hmm. such that we're... Uh, <laughs> okay, so don't worry. The words fail me. Let's get to the conversation. <laughs> Joining us from VAR Skype is Emmanuel Osemeka, Coordinator, Social Welfare Network Initiative. Thank you for joining us, Osemeka. Good morning. Well done. Okay, so we understand you're in the far north of the country, so you couldn't join us. But that question I asked earlier, how is it that we have growth? Or, yeah, we're told we have growth, but mm -hmm. it's not... Uh, seemingly evident. Let me put it that way. Well, um, good morning once again. Good morning, uh, Antalya. Good morning. Nice to see you guys again. Happy New Year. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> in September, almost. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you guys in... Um, I can't remember how long. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, I think basically the, the, the point here is um, uh, what we have in Nigeria is, is evidence to everyone. Um, Nigeria has not, you know, ha we've not witnessed the real growth in terms of what our counterpart countries, you know, really um, measure in terms of economic growth, which is reflective in the lives of the people. Look at South Africa, for example, look at our budgetary um, provisions, budgetary allocation, look at the areas where we have interest. For example, um, Nigeria seems to, you know, have our priorities in the wrong places and um, the areas where we ought to have um, our major investment um is usually not given that kind of attention so you talk about education you 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 already know how many percent of our budget which is already the entire budget of nigeria is completely inadequate for the population in the first instance then number two you look at the ratio of the budget v's healthcare provision v's education v's um you know, industrialization, innovation, and of course, infrastructural development. Um, so you look at all of that, how does the level of our investment in these key critical sectors, you know, um, dovetail to reduction in poverty, dovetail to zero hunger, dovetail to good health and well-being, dovetail to quality education, and such like. What about the inequality? So at the end of the day, you find out that because we are willing to spend as much as 242 billion naira just for election that will take place in two weeks, within two weeks, but we are not willing to spend such amount of money to provide good health care for the populace. I, I don't know if you understand where I'm drawing my analogy from. Mm -hmm. So if we are willing to spend 242 billion for election, Two weeks period only, but we have very poor primary health care facilities across the federation. Now, the primary health care facilities take care of the 180 or 200 million, whatever the number we are right now. So, these are the priorities we have. The educational sector does not even get up to five percent of our budget. Now, our budget is completely inadequate year in, year out. So, critically, Nigeria cannot even begin to talk about economic growth, how much more inclusive growth. You must have first economic growth, 
then you can now talk about inclusive growth because you must grow first then talk about inclusion so today we are you know we are grossly inadequate in our budgetary provisions and spending do not forget budgetary provisions does not equate spending in okay. 2016 2017 i think we did about 20 to 30 percent of the entire budget um, so that's where we feel that uh, emmanuel let's look at the issue of employment because um it's very worrisome that so we have so many young able-bodied people who are unemployed they are willing to work but they just no jobs anywhere and it boggles my mind sometimes when I think about so many people who are jobless, they say that labor is cheap in Nigeria, and yet we don't have factories just springing up in every corner because there are people who are willing to work in those factories. I mean, you're absolutely correct. We're not just talking about um, jobs not being there. We're also talking about underemployment as well so we're going to look at it in both ways the unemployed all un unemployment issues in nigeria and of course the underemployment that is also uh, with us uh, so i will start with the underemployment for instance um i think in the last uh, 10 years uh, within the last 10 years we've talked about consistent um six or uh, between six and seven percent uh, economic growth growth gdp growth or whatever we uh, our economics we usually call it um which most often do not have direct impact or commensurate impact on the lives of the ordinary citizens across the length and breadth of nigeria and by yeah, extension me, though, we need to go on a quick break when we'll come back continue the conversation from there welcome back we've been uh joined from our Abuja studios by the country director of Plan International Nigeria, Dr. Husseini Abdu. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so um, let me, Dr. Husseini, before I come to you, Osemeka, you were talking about um, employment, unemployment and underemployment in Nigeria. Yes, absolutely. Um, I was trying to draw the analogy between the two and uh, that uh, what we have is actually more endemic than um, that we're already, um, you know, talking about. Um, for example, if you take um, um, a closer look at the uh, report from MBS, you discover that from 2015 to date, we've almost gone at 3.9% you know, ratio or year in, almost monthly. Uh, cumulatively, we, we are currently at 18.8 percent, you know, or, or, or unemploy, unemployment ratio in Nigeria today. Youth unemployment ratio in Nigeria is currently at 18.8 percent, and that is we currently there has not been uh, any statistical data on the unemployed uh, on a underemployment, you know, so to speak. However, as an employer of labor, I I understand clearly that there are in, a lot of people currently uh, employed, but not necessarily gainfully employed, because they are currently earning not livable wages. Give, for example, the federal government workers. I mean, there have been clamor for uh, minimum wage increment. Uh, it means different things for different people, especially for the elected governors, uh, who currently the narrative is that um, each state should determine what they should pay. Uh, the 18,000 minimum wage is still not even uh, being paid by a lot of um, uh, state government and several corporations. A lot of um, uh, banks or multinationals have resorted to casual uh, labor as against proper employment. So what we have in currently in Nigeria is more like an unregulated society where um, anything goes. So employers decide what, how, and when, and they really get away with it. That's why to, on, on a regular basis, you see the uh, Labor Congress once in a while picket um, uh, multinationals or uh, companies that they feel their people, their staff 
have been you know, unduly or badly treated. So the rate, the rate at which um, the unemployment ratio is growing is scary. That's number one. And that is also threatening the SDG goal. Okay. And as long as we continue to dip in that ratio, we cannot talk about economic growth. Do not also, we cannot also talk about inclusiveness because a lot of people have been thrown into the unemployment market on a daily basis. A lot of people are still not able to be employed because the economy is going down daily. 